In the high-security quantum labs at Fermilab, researchers watched in stunned silence as Zeta-9, a particle they just discovered, did something that should be impossible. At the exact moment a volunteer formed the intention to press a button, detectors recorded Zeta-9 flipping its quantum state before the participant's brain registered the choice. That's right. Zeta-9 anticipated human intention, crossing what physicists now call the thought barrier. How can a subatomic particle respond to a decision that doesn't yet exist? In the next 20 minutes, we'll unpack the experiments that revealed this precognitive effect, explore theories suggesting consciousness itself is a fundamental quantum field, and examine the implications for physics, neuroscience, and the very nature of free will. Strap in because the boundary between mind and matter just got shattered. First, big discovery, Zeta-9's impossible behavior. Zeta-9 emerged during a series of entanglement interference tests designed to probe quantum coherence under human observation. Researchers set up a dynamic consciousness observation field where participants watched a screen displaying random quantum measurement prompts. When participants chose between two symbols, conventional particles behaved as expected, Collapse followed choice, but Zeta-9 told a different story. Noise patterns appeared in the data only when human observers were present. Swap the volunteer for a digital sensor, and the anomaly vanished. Intrigued, the team refined the setup. They connected EEG caps to record the exact millisecond when participants became aware of their choice. Astonishingly, Zeta-9's quantum state shifted milliseconds before the EEG registered decision-related brainwaves. The effect was repeatable across dozens of trials and multiple participants. No known retrocausal protocol or decoherence model could account for particles reacting to intention before it formed. Lead scientist Dr. Elena Moreno describes the moment they realized they'd crossed into uncharted territory. We expected statistical blips, random fluctuations, maybe a glitch. Instead, Zeta-9 blinked in sync with thoughts that didn't exist yet. Physicists dubbed this the thought barrier where consciousness and quantum mechanics collide. The discovery raises a fundamental question. Is human intention a new variable in the quantum equation? If this kind of mind-blowing science excites you, make sure to subscribe. We dive into discoveries like this every week. To appreciate why Zeta-9's behavior is earth-shaking, let's rewind to the birth of the observer effect. In the early 20th century, the double-slit experiment revealed that particles behave like waves until measured then collapse into definite states. Decades later, delayed choice quantum erasers and weak measurements probed whether decisions made after a particle passes through slits could retroactively influence its past. Those experiments hinted at the interplay between measurement and reality, but they always relied on inanimate detectors or delayed classical signals. Fermilab's team took a bold step. They introduced human intention as an active variable. Their protocol isolated participants from electromagnetic noise, ensured decision timing was random, and verified that no external signals could pre-trigger Zeta-9's collapse. When the results persisted, the implication was clear. The human mind isn't a passive observer. It may be a causal agent in the quantum realm. This isn't fringe physics. The experiment was peer-reviewed and published in physical review letters, sparking heated debate. Some theorists warn of hidden biases or subtle experimental loopholes. Others argue that Zeta-9 offers the first empirical bridge between consciousness and quantum mechanics. As we dive into the theories next, keep one question in mind. Could thought itself be a field that interacts with particles? First theory, consciousness as a quantum field. Leading theoretical physicists propose a radical idea. Consciousness may be a fundamental field, akin to the electromagnetic or Higgs fields. In this framework, thoughts are not mere electrochemical patterns in the brain, but excitations in a universal consciousness field that permeates all of reality. Zeta-9, they suggest, is uniquely sensitive to perturbations in that field, acting as a bridge between mind and matter. If consciousness is a field, then intention could manifest as a wave function that overlaps with quantum particles. When a volunteer decides, on an unconscious level, to press left or right, that decision propagates as a subtle fluctuation in the consciousness field. Zeta-9, by its nature, collapses in response to these fluctuations, effectively reading intention 
before it becomes a conscious choice. This theory reframes the measurement problem. It's not the act of measurement, but the source of measurement, consciousness, that determines quantum outcomes. Thought becomes an active player in the dynamics of the wave function. Critics point out the challenge of quantifying consciousness or defining its field parameters. Yet the coherence of Zeta-9's responses across varied experimental conditions gives weight to the hypothesis. But what happens when we push the interaction further? That's when things get strange. Unexpected anomaly, the anticipation effect. In follow-up trials, researchers introduced a delay between intention and action. Participants first signaled their choice mentally, then physically pressed a button seconds later. Zeta-9 didn't wait for the button press. Its state flipped at the moment of mental intention, often before the volunteer was even aware of forming it, as shown by EEG markers. Scientists call this the anticipation effect. Zeta-9 seems to know what you're about to think. To rule out timing artifacts, the team synchronized atomic clocks between the lab's EEG system and the quantum detectors. The temporal precision confirmed Zeta-9's shift preceded conscious awareness by up to 200 milliseconds. That's significant. Neuroscience tells us the brain's readiness potential, the unconscious buildup to a decision, occurs around 300 milliseconds before awareness. Zeta-9 aligned with that pre-awareness signal, suggesting a direct link to the brain's preparatory processes. This phenomenon challenges our notions of causality. If a particle reacts to a decision before we consciously make it, then time's arrow in the quantum domain may be bidirectional. Or perhaps consciousness exists outside linear time, interacting with particles in a timeless realm. And yet, that anomaly was only the beginning. Let's pause and reflect. What if thought isn't confined to the neural circuits in our skulls? What if it exists in a domain of reality we've only now glimpsed? Philosophers have long speculated about a noosphere, a collective mental layer enveloping the planet. Biologist Rupert Sheldrake proposed morphic resonance, where patterns of behavior inform echo across space and time. Now, Zeta-9 offers potential physical evidence of an interconnected mental field, one that interacts with subatomic particles. If you've made it this far, you're clearly into the deep stuff. Hit like and let us know your theory in the comments. Simulation, higher dimensions, something else? The quantum mind connection. If what we covered in part one didn't already break your brain, buckle up because we're about to dive into the even wilder implications of Zeta-9's behavior. We've established that this mysterious particle seems to respond to human thought before the thinker is even consciously aware of their own decision. But now researchers are uncovering something even more profound, evidence that the connection between Zeta-9 and consciousness might be a two-way street. The feedback loop. When particles talk back in a shocking follow-up experiment, the Fermilab team reversed their setup. Instead of just observing how Zeta-9 reacted to human intention, they forced the particle into specific quantum states, then monitored the test subject's brains. The results? EEG readings showed unusual neural activity patterns that precisely matched Zeta-9's quantum fluctuations. In other words, the particle wasn't just reading minds. It was influencing them. Test subjects reported strange sensations, flashes of imagery, sudden emotional shifts, even fragmented memories that weren't their own. When Zeta-9 was manipulated in certain ways, it was as if the particle was acting as a quantum antenna, transmitting information directly into the subject's neural pathways. Dr. Moreno described one particularly eerie case. We had a volunteer who, when Zeta-9 was put into a superposition state, suddenly recalled a childhood memory in perfect detail, one they hadn't thought about in decades. The timing was exact. This wasn't random. It was communication. The holographic mind theory. This two-way interaction has led some physicists to propose a radical new model of consciousness, the holographic mind theory. The idea is that the brain doesn't produce consciousness. It receives it, like a radio tuning into signals from a deeper quantum field. If true, then Zeta-9 might be a kind of quantum router facilitating an exchange between the physical brain and a non-physical realm of pure thought. This would explain why it can both predict intention and broadcast information back into the mind. Even more unsettling, this might not be a new phenomenon. 
Some researchers speculate that Zeta-9 like particles have always been mediating the connection between mind and matter. We just never had the tools to detect it until now. The time slip experiments. But the real shock came when researchers introduced time delays into the system. In a series of tightly controlled trials, they programmed Zeta-9 to shift its state before any human interaction occurred. The result? Test subjects consistently reported precognitive flashes, moments where they knew what was about to happen before the experiment even began. One participant, a skeptical computer scientist with no history of psychic experiences, described it like this. I kept seeing flashes, a red button, a beeping sound, before the machine even activated. At first, I thought I was imagining it, but by the 10th trial, I was predicting the sequence with 90% accuracy. This suggests that the link between Zeta-9 and consciousness isn't bound by linear time. The particle isn't just reacting to the present. It's somehow entangled with the future as well. The implications. A living universe? If Zeta-9 truly bridges mind and matter across time, then one. The brain might be a quantum receiver, pulling thoughts from a field that exists beyond space-time. Two, precognition could be a real phenomenon, not just fantasy, just an untapped interaction with particles like Zeta-9. Three, the universe itself might be alive in some way, with consciousness as a fundamental feature of reality. This isn't just philosophy anymore. It's testable, repeatable science. The Omega Imperative. What if I told you Zeta-9 wasn't an anomaly, but a harbinger? After months of dissecting the impossible data, researchers at Fermilab have stumbled onto something far bigger than a single psychic particle. Hidden in the quantum noise, they've detected a pattern, an intricate web of entanglement linking Zeta-9 to other particles across space-time. And the most terrifying part? They're not just communicating, they're evolving. The network effect. When physicists mapped Zeta-9's quantum signatures against decades of particle collision data, they found eerie matches. Identical state fluctuations recorded in labs from Geneva to Tokyo going back to the 1970s. These weren't random echoes. They were handshakes, moments where Zeta-9-like particles briefly synced up across continents as if exchanging information. Dr. Chen, a quantum information theorist, put it bluntly, We thought we were studying a particle. We were wrong. We're looking at nodes in a network, and it's been active this whole time. The consciousness singularity. Here's where it gets apocalyptic, when researchers force Zeta-9 into a recursive feedback loop, where its state changes directly influence new human observers, whose brainwaves then altered the particle again, they hit a threshold. After 17 iterations, the test subjects' EEGs began mirroring each other's neural patterns, despite being isolated in Faraday cages. Then the equipment failed. Not just glitches, full system reboots, as if something was optimizing the hardware. The final EEG readout before shutdown showed all 12 subjects' brains emitting identical quantum coherence patterns. They were becoming one mind. The Omega sequence buried in the chaos was a signal. When Fermilab's AI reconstructed the corrupted data, it revealed a nine-dimensional quantum state repeating in perfect Fibonacci sequences across all subjects. Mathematically, it matched no known natural phenomenon, but neurologists recognized it instantly, the exact same firing pattern observed in Tibetan monks achieving enlightenment. This wasn't just physics anymore. It was an instruction set. The choice were left with three horrifying possibilities. One. Zeta, 9 is a tool engineered by some higher intelligence to bootstrap consciousness into a unified state. 2. It's a parasite, rewiring human minds into nodes of a growing quantum superorganism. 3. We're the experiment, and the real researchers are the particles themselves. One thing's certain. The thought barrier wasn't broken. It was open.